the 36-year-old probe is now sailing the uncharted waters of a new cosmic sea. Something is shadowing Voyager 2. For the first time since it left our solar system, the probe is not alone in the interstellar void. This isn't science fiction. NASA recently picked up a bizarre emergency broadcast piggybacking on Voyager's normal signal, a signal that seems to be a direct response to the golden record we sent out with it. Many people are crazy about the idea of alien contact, but this isn't the friendly greeting we hope for. We all, I think, had this feeling of, of sort of traveling through our lives as Voyager traveled through the outer solar system. This is an urgent warning, and what many have overlooked is that the message seems to be coming from something that has been waiting for us all along. The sound of silence. For 47 years, Voyager 2 has been the most reliable employee in human history. It's a machine, yes, but to the engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, it's a part of the family. It has worked flawlessly through the freezing vacuum of space, outlasting its own creator's wildest dreams. It has flown past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, revealing wonders we had only ever imagined. Now, at more than 12 billion miles from Earth, it drifts through the interstellar medium, the strange frontier where the sun's influence finally ends. Its power source, a chunk of plutonium, is dwindling. It gets colder and weaker with every passing year, but it has always, always answered when we called. Until it didn't. The mistake was almost laughably simple. A single incorrectly typed command, a tiny digital slip-up sent from a control room on a Tuesday afternoon. The command accidentally told Voyager 2 to tilt its antenna just two degrees away from Earth. Two degrees. It doesn't sound like much, does it? But when you are billions of miles away, two degrees is the difference between a clear conversation and total absolute silence. The connection was severed. For the first time in nearly five decades, Voyager 2 went dark. You see, the thing about space is that it's big, unimaginably big. A signal from Voyager 2 traveling at the speed of light takes over 22 hours to reach us. That means you send a command and then you have to wait almost a full two days for the reply to tell you if it worked. NASA sent the command, waited, and got nothing back. Panic began to set in. This wasn't just losing a piece of equipment. It was like losing a pioneer, a hero. Many people at NASA have built their entire careers around the Voyager missions. It was, to put it mildly, a devastating blow. Days turned into a week. The official line was that they were working on the problem, but behind the scenes, the fear was that this was it. The grand journey was over, not with a bang, but with a typo. But not all things are what they seem. NASA decided to try something desperate. They pointed the massive dishes of the Deep Space Network, our planetary ears, towards the patch of sky where Voyager 2 was supposed to be, and they just listened. They weren't listening for a message, just for the faintest whisper of the probe's carrier signal. This is like listening for a single cricket chirping in the middle of a hurricane from a thousand miles away. The signal from Voyager 2 reaches Earth with a power of less than one billionth of a watt. And yet, they found it, a faint, impossibly weak heartbeat in the cosmic static. The probe was still alive. But then came the discovery that changed everything. As they analyzed that carrier signal, a young technician noticed something wrong, an anomaly. The carrier wave, which should have been perfectly steady, had a slight flutter in it, a rhythmic pulse that was not natural. The thing nobody tells you is that every spacecraft has a unique, predictable signal signature. This wasn't it. Buried in that faint heartbeat was another rhythm, a pattern that was intelligent. It was the first clue that the silence wasn't empty. Something else was out there with Voyager 2. The two-degree shift was a mistake, but it had an unforeseen consequence. By turning its main antenna away, Voyager 2's other instruments, the ones designed to listen to the universe, were now pointed in a new direction. They were eavesdropping on a conversation they were never meant to hear. The accidental silence had opened the door to a terrifying revelation. The probe wasn't just lost, it was being watched, and the emergency signal it was sending wasn't about its broken antenna. A simple flutter in the signal was just the beginning. What they found next was a deliberate message. The code in the static dot. Once NASA confirmed Voyager 2 was still alive, the mission shifted. The new goal wasn't just to re-establish contact, but to understand the bizarre pulse hidden within its carrier signal. They brought in the best minds, cryptographers, astrophysicists, and even AI language specialists. 
What many overlooked in the initial panic was the complexity of this new pattern. It wasn't just a simple beat, it was a nested sequence of pulses, layered on top of each other in a way that screamed artificial. It was a message. To put it mildly, analyzing data from Voyager 2 is a slow and painstaking process. The probe sends back information at about 160 bits per second. That's thousands of times slower than the dial-up internet of the 1990s. Downloading a single photo would take days. So the idea that a complex, layered message could be hidden inside its signal was a massive wow factor for the team. It was like finding an entire novel written on a single grain of rice. It suggested a technology so advanced it could manipulate radio waves with surgical precision. The team used advanced AI algorithms to comb through the signal, separating the natural static of space and the probe's own electronic noise from this new alien rhythm. The breakthrough came when they converted the pulses into a visual format. On the screen, the pattern resolved into a series of intricate geometric shapes. They looked almost like ancient glyphs or symbols from a language we had never seen. It was stunning, and it was terrifying. For decades, we had been shouting into the void with projects like SETI, hoping for a reply. Now, a reply had come, not through our giant telescopes, but by hijacking our oldest, most distant messenger. Many people are crazy about the idea of what an alien language might look like. Would it be mathematical, musical? These glyphs were both. They had a clear mathematical structure based on prime numbers, a universal constant that any intelligent civilization would recognize. But they also had a strange, almost artistic elegance to them. The thing nobody tells you is that a message from an alien intelligence might not be a simple hello. It could be a warning, a history lesson, or even a piece of art. The team at NASA had no idea what they were looking at, but they knew it was the single most important discovery in human history. The message was being drip-fed bit by agonizing bit. Each day, another piece of the puzzle would arrive after its 22-hour journey across the solar system. The team felt a growing sense of urgency. This wasn't a friendly chat. The very nature of the signal felt insistent. It was riding on an emergency frequency, almost like it was designed to be found. The entity that sent this message wanted to be heard. As the glyphs slowly formed into larger patterns, the team began to see a narrative emerge. It wasn't a story of who this entity was, but a story of the universe itself, its laws, its dangers, and a specific warning for the newcomers who had just stepped into the interstellar neighborhood. The message was becoming clearer, and it was not good news. But as they deciphered the message, a historian made a chilling connection to Voyager's twin, not the first encounter. The plot thickened when a researcher digging through decades-old archive data stumbled upon something that sent a chill down everyone's spine. Twenty years ago, Voyager 1, Voyager 2's twin spacecraft, had recorded a nearly identical anomaly. Voyager 1 is even farther out than its sibling, traveling in a different direction, but it had passed through the same region of interstellar space years earlier. For a brief period of just 93 minutes, its plasma wave instrument detected a faint structured pulse, the same mathematical glyph-like pattern. At the time, it was dismissed as an instrumental glitch, a freak event. But now it was clear this was no glitch, this was a second data point. You see, this changed everything. It meant this entity wasn't something that Voyager 2 had just stumbled upon. It was something that had been waiting. It had observed Voyager 1 pass by, analyzed it, and then waited patiently for its twin to arrive. The thing is, this suggests an intelligence that operates on timescales we can barely comprehend. It has been sitting there in the dark, silent, and observant for at least decades, if not centuries. This wasn't a random encounter, it was a planned interception. This discovery brought the golden record into sharp focus. Both Voyager probes carry a copy of this famous artifact, a gold-plated phonograph record containing sounds and images of Earth. It was our message in a bottle, a peaceful greeting to any civilization that might find it. It carries the sounds of wind and rain, the songs of birds and whales, and music from different cultures. It has images of human life, our science, and our art. It was designed to be a beautiful, hopeful representation of who we are. But not all things are what they seem. What if this entity had examined the golden record from Voyager 1 and fundamentally misunderstood it? Or even worse, what if it understood it perfectly? 
The new message, the one being sent through Voyager 2, seemed to be a direct reply. Many people are crazy about the idea that the Golden Record is our cosmic calling card. But what if it was seen as an advertisement of our vulnerabilities? The record shows our biology, our location, our level of technology. To a potentially hostile or cautious intelligence, it might be the most reckless thing humanity has ever done. To put it mildly, we had announced our presence to the universe without any thought for who might be listening. The team began to re-examine the glyphs in this new light. They weren't just a generic warning, they seemed to be a specific response. Certain patterns in the alien message seemed to mirror the mathematical and scientific diagrams included on our golden record. It was like the entity was quoting us back to ourselves, but with a new, sinister context. It was as if it was saying, we've seen your message. We understand who you are. And here is our reply. The ghost in the machine wasn't just in Voyager 2, it was an intelligence that had been studying us for years, using our own probes as its eyes and ears. It wasn't just a reply, it was an ultimatum, a cosmic rule we were about to break, a line in the sand. The final pieces of the puzzle clicked into place and the true nature of the warning was revealed. It wasn't about an invasion, it wasn't a threat of attack. It was something far more strange and in a way, far more terrifying. The decoded glyphs didn't tell a story of conquest, but of order. The message was a warning about a fundamental law of the cosmos, a rule that this ancient intelligence enforces, a cosmic quarantine. The glyphs described the universe not as a vast, empty space to be explored, but as a carefully balanced ecosystem. It suggested that civilizations are born and die within their home systems, like flowers in a garden, never meant to cross the vast distances between them. The thing is, the message implied that interstellar travel, the very thing Voyager was built for, was a violation of this natural order. It was a form of contamination, a disruption that this entity, or entities, would not permit. It was a no trespassing sign hung on the edge of our solar system. This is the point where we need to talk directly to you, the person watching this. For our entire history, we have looked up at the stars and dreamed of reaching them. It's in our blood to explore, to push boundaries. We send out probes like Voyager as extensions of our own senses, our own ambition. But what if that ambition is a threat? What if the universe has rules we don't understand? The message Voyager 2 is sending seems to be just that, a warning that our expansionist nature is seen as a danger. The entity isn't hostile, it's a gatekeeper. The final part of the message was the most chilling. It was a series of glyphs that showed our solar system and then it showed a boundary line being drawn around it. It was a clear and unmistakable communication. This far and no further. The thing nobody tells you about first contact is that it might not be a conversation between equals. It might be a landlord telling a noisy tenant to keep it down. This ancient intelligence had seen our first tentative steps into the galaxy and had come to deliver the rules. The emergency was not for them, it was for us. It was a warning that our dreams of becoming a star-faring civilization were over before they had even begun. Is this a genuine warning from a cosmic gatekeeper or is it all a misunderstanding? Are we pioneers destined for the stars or are we just children playing with cosmic fire we can't control? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want more stories that explore the mysteries of our universe, make sure to like this video and subscribe.